Hello and welcome back to Redirecting. In this segment, I am going to be covering two viewer comments. Uh, now these comments um, are in regards to what are we supposed to be doing uh, while we're in this country. Um, a lot of people consider this to be Babylon. And so uh, the questions, uh, both of them are along those lines. Uh, they are in response to me talking about uh, starting a business uh, where you are. And so I wanted to bring both of those questions um, out and then respond to them. Uh, the first one comes from a viewer by the name of Z Sparrow. I'm just using the first um, initial of the name, but not the full name. And it says, hello, Deborah. I just wanted to say that per the prophecies, Yah's people are not in the condition of good citizenship in the land of their enemies of, or America to start and grow businesses in the last days. In order to plant and grow food, you need more than just the seeds. You need an ecosystem, including sun, rain, dirt, bees, etc. The same is true economically in business. You need the support of the government, private sector, or other businesses, as well as citizens and technology, etc. The ecosystem of business since we have been in this country we have tried to start grow businesses without worrying about the business ecosystem uh, i.e capital lobbying for policy and regulations that support our businesses ownership of land and or property citizens and or customers both here and abroad etc and each time we constructed a business or town it was taken from us per the prophecies in Deuteronomy 28, Leviticus 26. Now we are in the last days, nearing the time of the Gentiles' fulfillment. The prophecies don't say that we will have an easy, prosperous time after the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. But it says that nation will rise against nation and that will bring on World War III, which we see in the making today. During the war, other nations will return to their lands and Father Yah is calling us out of Babylon or America to return to our land. The Bible says that we will return on the ships of Tarshish or Spain and airplanes like doves and we will have great wealth, i.e. cattle, horses, livestock, gold, etc. I have nothing against black businesses. However, from the signs of the times, whites are becoming more violent towards blacks as we near our return to our land and the prophecies telling us that it will get worse before it gets better Israel Israel will be reaping I'm sorry weeping and asking the way to Zion I don't think starting a business in a country that is weaponized against us as a people is a good idea just saying wait on the Lord Shalom okay that's the first um, statement and now I'm going to go to the second statement as well. Um, and this one is from T. Clark. She says, sorry, sis, good plan if we are in the right place. The Most High did not tell us to start businesses in the land of our captivity. Like he told Jeremiah, he told us to come out of Babylon and don't partake in her sins. We're, we're to be set apart. We're supposed to be focusing on getting back to him why would I buy land in a place destined to be destroyed by the Most High? It's better to obey Yah than man. I don't want nothing from this world that is given into the hand of the wicked. I'll store my treasure in heaven by continuing to focus on the Most High. We're cursed in this land until the Messiah returns. Prosperity in this land can only come if you serve the ruler of this world, which is Satan. The Most High word don't return to him void. Shalom, shalom, Israel. This is Zibaya, also known as Talia, coming with another judgment, a third witness. One is great, two is a charm, but three seals a deal. And so we have a third judgment against Deborah Watchman and her whole house and her ministry. Uh, tonight, I'm going to show you how the devil works. And I'm going to expose the devil and his devil tongue. Every time this woman opens up her mouth the only thing that comes out of her mouth 
is the serpent's tongue speaking deceitful, wicked, slick, slippery, double-tongued, evil things to Yah's people. And I know thousands of you love use of the boar watchmen. Ministers of Satan as light, wolves in sheep's clothing, clothing, false prophet and prophetess. That's what a watchman is. They are prophetess. They are here to blow a trumpet to Zion about the trouble that's coming, when and how it's coming, and what Yah has directed them to speak to the people on what they should do when the trouble comes. And I'm going to show you the hypocrisy in her own words. I'm going to show you the snake, the double tongue, the Medusa talking, and y'all better stop looking at this woman because you're going to turn to stone. So she proceeds to make two comments or correct, set the record straight on two commenters that I would agree with almost 100% of what they said, except the fact about the ships of Tarshish, which I deal with that in the Come Out of My People, part five, that the ships of Tarshish are not coming to get us. This is a misunderstanding and prophecy, but I do lay down how Yah, and we're going to go over that some of the night, how Yah said he's going to gather us because she presumes to speak with a double tongue on that, right? So we're gonna go through her comments or her setting the record straight on the comments, but I'm gonna set the record straight on her twisted double tongue. I'm gonna show you that the devil is speaking from this woman as a minister of light with a demonic spirit. She's not filled with the Holy Spirit, but she is definitely filled with a set apart ghost, demon. And she is an agent of Satan direct. And I'm going to prove it tonight. And everything she speaks, I'm going to show you how these ministers have lied to you for the hundreds of years, the thousands of years, the, the tens of years, the fifties of years, and the last 50, 60, 70 years of this Christianity, because that's all they are, they're Christianity that took on another cover, right? And Christians and agents. And I'm going to show you how to get over on the people, right? This woman will not even open up the book and prove her statements. She just makes common sense, wise statements and quotes out the book. And I'm going to quote everything that she's quoting now, everything she's quoting that you think is the word of Yah. I'm going to go back to the book. I'm going to show you where she's getting the quote from. And I'm going to show you how she's twisting Yah's word how she's uh, deceitfully using Yah's word. I'm going to show you how she's twisting her tongue like a snake on Yah's word. I'm going to show you the treachery in her lips. I'm going to show you that the devil is talking and not the words of Yahushua by his Holy Spirit. So let's proceed. Let's see what the Bora Watchman proceeds to set straight, that I'm going to set straight by the word. And this is what's wrong with the people. Because y'all don't know the word and you let people talk common sense to you, good sense to you, but it's not Yah's sense. It's not his wisdom. It's not his word. So we, I'm going to show you the devil in this woman tonight. Every time I look at this woman, the only thing I see is a tongue slithering out her mouth. All right. So let's proceed. All right, y'all. Once again, I, I introduce who I am. I'm coming to show you the devil and the devil's tongue. But before I go into any deep words, um, let me give all praises and honor to the Most High Yah Yahweh El Elyon, um, his son, Yah Yahushua, right? Our Messiah, our creator and maker, right? Unified as one with the Father, um, who is sitting in the right hand in heaven preparing a place for us right now. And um, his Holy Spirit, the carrying spirit, his messenger angel, the Holy Spirit, that also bear his name, Yahweh Hawa HaKadosh. Let me give all honor and praises to them. And so I just want to uh, extend the hand, y'all. Let me help you show you the light, how to navigate your way in the dark places. If you would let me show you the word of Yahushua, 
For his word is like a light unto my feet and a lamp unto our path. And as um, this devil continues to redirect you, what I'm trying to say is that she is redirecting you in a dark place, in the pits of hell, into the fire, right? For an everlasting burning. And she's not showing you the light of the world to direct you in the straight and the narrow path, right? The narrow path. Even with all her suggestions, you will hear the double tongue saying, well, you don't have to do what I'm saying. You know, you could do either or many ways. I'm just saying. And I don't hear the spirit of the word of the light that's going to guide you in a dark place, in that narrow path to the kingdom. Okay, first of all, I would like to bring uh, some understanding and clarity to both of these concerns. Uh, that both of these people have. First of all, Babylon is not just the U.S. It's going to spread all over the world. That was made very clear in scripture. Um, Babylon is a system. It's not just a chunk of land, but it's a system as well. And so the whole idea that only America is going to be um, involved in what the Most High is going to do, because he already made it plain in scripture what he's going to do to the whole planet. He didn't just say America, okay? Um, Babylon... Um, Part of um, Babylon or Mystery Babylon is a system, is not just land. Okay, so she proceeds to continue to spew out that lie that Babylon is just a system and the destruction that Yah is uh, describing that's going to happen to Babylon is going to happen to the whole world. That is a lie. Now, I'm not going to go into all the scriptures of that one tonight. I'm going to speak some common sense into those that say they know the scripture because I've already dealt very clearly in my come out of her parts three and four, going into all the scriptures that's talking about Babylon and how he's going to destroy her. This is why we must come out of her, right? So if so, let me show you the reasoning without even going into the scriptures first about how what she's saying don't make no sense. If Babylon is a system that's all over the world, please ask this woman and anyone else that's, the, that's talking about this system to describe the system. Describe what this system looks like that the whole world is under. And then when Yah tells us to come out of her, and so she's saying that we're just supposed to come out of a system, but yet presumes to tell you we should buy land, start businesses underneath this system, that is hypocrisy, people. It don't make no sense. Don't make no sense. If Babylon is a system that is all over the world that Yah is telling us to come out of, then the only way to come out that system would be what? Go to the wilderness where Yah is providing your every need. Outside of that, nothing makes sense about what this woman is saying that Babylon is just a system. Now, for those of you that read this word and want to know prophecy, go back and listen to my lecture, Come Out of Her, My People, parts three, where I delve into all the scriptures that tell you about to come out of Babylon and why, and how he describes that I'm sending a country and a fleet of countries from the North countries to array themselves against her. Does that sound like the whole world? Or that sounds like a bunch of nations a world war coming against one nation that's controlling the whole world. When you read Revelations, it clearly tells you that the 10 toes is another beast that's rising up that hate this whore, the Babylon, and they're going to destroy her with fire. So what system does that sound like to you? Or does that sound like a war, a world war? which all of the prophets have described is going to happen to Babylon. Therefore, Yah says, come out of her. So I'm not going to go into that just by reasoning alone. You guys that think you got so much sense listening to this wise, slick, deceitful devil woman speak no sense nonsense, right? Think about it. If Babylon is just a system, then how are you coming out of it? And if Babylon is just a system, why is she telling you to do things that will get you caught up in that system? Don't make no sense, y'all. Don't make no sense. The devil's tongue is long. But let's proceed. 
because everything else she speaks, I'm going to go into. The Babylon thing, like I said, I can bring out one or two. I've already done that. Those of you that just want to listen to smooth words, I'm going to show you what y'all says about smooth words. So let's move on to what else this devil Medusa is spewing out her with her venom on the people against the word of Yah. All right. Uh, the second thing is when I hear people saying that you shouldn't start a business, um, my question to you is this, do you have a job? Because starting a business or being self-employed is basically you saying that you are going to employ yourself. Because if you have a job, um, you're basically saying that someone else is going to em employ me and that I depend on someone else to uh, provide for my needs. That's basically what having a job is. I'm not against anyone having a job, okay? I used to work a good portion of my life. Um, the point I'm trying to make is this here. If you have a job, you obviously have that job so that you can take care of your bills, take care of your family, your needs, and all of that. There is no one who's going to take care of us. So if you have a need, if you have bills, lights, gas, water, um, gas um, for your vehicle, um, travel needs, all of that, you got to get the money from somewhere. So either you can get it from um, employment or self-employment. That's all a business is, is self-employment. Um, most, a lot of people, they spend a lot of time at their jobs. Um, eight to 10 hours a day. If you work part-time, you're still spending time and travel going back and forth to work. And a lot of time is invested in your job anyway. Usually, if you have a business, you can make your own hours. Okay, so the whole idea that the Most High doesn't want us to establish business in the land of our captivity is just not biblical. Um, even the Proverbs 31 woman is spoken of as a woman who starts a business. She has her merchandise and she sells her merchandise. The scripture even talked about how she considers a field and buys it. That's talking about land. The Proverbs 31 woman. Um, outside of her husband, it said that she considers a field and she buys it. In other words, she buys land. All right, y'all. So we got the Proverbs 31 woman. That's great. The Proverbs 31 woman is not a woman in slavery. The Proverbs 31 woman is a free woman that is a daughter of Zion living in Israel with her husband underneath the guidance and the righteousness as a virtuous woman in Yahushua and his word, in the land of their inheritance, in the land which Yah had given to them. This Proverb 31 woman is not a woman that is enslaved or captivity in another man's land. In another man's land, we have no inheritance here. Yah never told us to buy land here in America, and I'm going to prove it right and so this idea of starting a business once again that is not the same as just working the job y'all put you in slavery we are slaves the devil has confused you to think that because you can start a business and gain money in the land of your captivity that somehow you're free that you can be independent make your own money underneath the babylonian system when that's not what he sent us here for right and he told us that our return and our repentance is based upon the condition of us accepting our punishment. And so these people that want to come up and speak down to those that are content, Yahushua said, be content as a servant. Be content with what you make. Be content with the job. Be content and don't strive for money and riches. That's what Yahushua taught. And I'm going to show you that this woman is speaking against Yahushua, but we're going to get more to it. I'm going to let her speak more double-toned, devilish stuff against the word of Yah. Mind you, right? So the Proverbs 31 woman don't count here. And so this is how these people take Yah's word all out of context. Because Yah has prescribed the condition that we should remain in and will be in. And every time we try, just like the brother who commented to say, every time we try to come up, they're going to bring us down. And so, yes, these people are going to come up. Y'all are going to buy land. Y'all are going to listen to this devil. 
and I'm going to show you that y'all has said y'all going to listen to this devil, but he's already declared what he, the end, the outcome of what you are trying to do is going to be. So every time we got put down, y'all, in this country, it looked like we was rising up. It looked like the man was allowing us to be successful. It looked like they had established laws and freedom and rights for us to take advantage of. And we did that. And we gained, right? We know what took place in history. We were doing well. But as soon as we began to do well, Yah put it down. And trust me, he's going to do it again. Now, this is the Watchmen report that has been selling you the Hollywood four horsemen destruction is coming upon the land, upon Babylon the Great, for the last 10, 12, how many years they've been on YouTube selling you everything that they're selling you based upon destruction. But I'm going to show you the hypocrisy of this don't make no sense what she's saying. It doesn't make sense. Right? All right. So that's all I'm going to say to that because there's scriptures that I'm going to deal with the double tongue, right? What y'all said about our condition now, right? So she didn't want to confront what I had to say to her. She didn't want to go through all my comments and my verses and the word that Yah has brought me. She didn't want to address me. She just want to put out a universal prayer against me and talk around me, right? But these young people, whoever they are, they made fine comments, not complete with truth, but that's what she wants to address. So I'm going to help them address, readdress, redirect her misdirection of you all. Now, this woman, I said again, is an agent of the devil and an agent of this government. And so since I put my judgment on her to show her, right, that there's no rapture, you'll hear her talking now about the gathering. All of a sudden, there is a gathering, but she want to revert back to, but y'all said he's going to gather us. We're we going to talk about that. I'm going to show you the scripture, but she won't show you where Yah has determined how he's going to gather us. Because if she show you the scriptures that how Yah said he's going to gather us, everything she's saying falls to the ground. So I'm going to show you that what these people are doing, what these agents are doing, Yah prophesies that these people will come and sell you this lying dream. That's how I know she's an agent. Because they don't want you to leave. But by the time you guys invest, that much money in land. Do you know what it takes to start a farm, to start a land, to be self-sufficient? How many black people you know got the money to afford to do? By the time y'all do that, you could have been bought your ticket, find a place somewhere in a third country, get yourself a cheap little bit of land and get out. But I'm gonna show you how she's talking double tongue because once it comes to the idea of doing what y'all said, all of a sudden she talks this talk like, how are you gonna do that? Or where are you gonna get the money? right? Everybody ain't got the own um, money to get a ticket and get out. And how they going to, uh, what? But you telling people to buy land. By the time a black person got that kind of money to buy land, start plant seeds, like y'all going to be hoeing <laughs> that much land with your hands. <laughs> Not, right? Like y'all ain't going to have to take out loans, right? For the machinery to till the land and, and do all of that. Not by the time you got the money to do that, everything she's saying, well, how are you going to do that? The answer, you already already had the answer. You don't already had the answer. So she's talking down to people, very condescending, or people that just work a job. The very thing that y'all sent us here for, <laughs> for our punishment, right? I'm, I'm going to show you the condescending talk. How, how am I, I'm telling you, they're boule. They're agents. And they look down on people um, that she would consider poor that she would consider poor, all right? So let's go more. Now I'm gonna get some scripture on this fool, right? This lying Medusa, double-tongued snake, venomous poison that's spew, spitting all over y'all, man. And y'all are like burning like acid and don't even know it. Now, no man knows the day nor the hour when all of this stuff that the Bible prophesies or talks about is gonna take place. Now imagine if our people I'm just going to go back only 50 years. I'm only going back 50 years. Imagine if our people 50 years ago had the whole had that same idea that we shouldn't buy land, we shouldn't start businesses, we shouldn't do anything. Okay, how would they have survived? Okay? Now I know during the during the Jim Crow era there was a lot of stuff going on, okay? 
But if they didn't take care of their own needs, who was going to do it? Um, are you all saying that because we're in the land of our captivity, that we should all just um, close our eyes, lay our heads down and just die? Because, and I know you may think I'm being sarcastic and in a, in a sense I am, but I'm trying to get you to understand something that whether you're working a job for someone else, punching someone else's clock, or you're self-employed, you're employed because you need to take care of your business or take care of your needs or the needs of your family. So self-employment, a business, either one of them, is going to accomplish that for you, okay? All right, so let's deal with this statement. No man knows the day or the hour. They love the spewers out because y'all didn't send them. They don't know what they're talking about. And like I said, any prophet that goes and just spews that out like that as a blanket statement and don't show you the what thus says Yah, right, um, is, a, is, a, is, is a lying prophet or a presumptuous prophet. Like I said, they say they're not prophets, but yet they prophesize to you. They say they're not prophets, but the word watchman is nothing but another title for a prophet, a specific kind of prophet. The prophets that's here to tell you the specific danger that's coming in the last days and what Yah is telling them to tell you what to do. They're here to show you the light in a dark place. All right. So no man knows the day or the hour, not even the angels in heaven. Once again, like I said, I do a whole lesson on this. So I'm not going to give too much. I'm just going to quote the scripture. And I'm going to show you what she's pulling it out from. And I'm going to show you one or two scriptures that are, is attached to this to show you the whole matter. Not the whole matter, but the fact that they're giving you a piece and a lying piece at that. Okay. No man knows that they are now. So this is this is where they get some of, we know that no man knows that they in the hour is about a thief in the night. Acts 1, the apostles of Theophilus. When they therefore will come together, they asked of him saying, Master, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? So they were asking Yahushua, was this the time that this, the restoration of the kingdom to Israel would be restored to them. And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the father has put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Spirit is come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me, both in Jerusalem and all of Judea and in Samaria in the uttermost parts of the earth. So what Yahushua was saying here, excuse me, is that he was directing his statement directly to the people that asked in that time frame, if he had given a time or a season or a date, it would be of none effect because times, seasons, and the calendar has been changed. And there's no way for you to calculate that because he would be speaking from the point that he's talking, answering the question until now, right? And so y'all don't have the means to calculate. That's not how y'all is dealing with us, right? And so it wasn't for them to know right? Because they had a certain job to do. And that was going to be their job all up until the ones that Yah sends to know the time and the season. All right. So let's go forward. Luke 21, day and the hour, the times and the season, no man knows, not even Yahushua, right? Not even the angels in heaven, but my father. True indeed, that statement was true in the moment he made it. But if you read the rest of his words, that was not the case through all of time, every instance. Luke 21, be watchful. 34, be so be careful of your hearts will that so your hearts won't be loaded down with drunken nausea, drunkenness, or intoxication. And cares of this life. The cares of this life. What is the cares of this life? The very thing that she's trying to tell you care so much about, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna show you what Yahushua taught, taught us about the cares of this life. But we see here again that he's telling you that this is to be drunk. This is to be intoxicated when you are putting your heart and you are loaded down with the cares of life. Right? He didn't say the wickedness of life. He said the cares of life that you're loaded. And that's what she's loading you with. And the day that that day will come upon you suddenly. And so what I'm trying to tell you is that what she's selling you is a drunken intoxicated doctrine 
about the cares of life, about buying land and what you're going to do. You need to get your own food and you need to be independent and you need to come up out your low state, old slave nigga, right? And you need to, how you going to eat? How you going to drink? How you going to put the food? I'm going to show you what Yahushua said and it's not what she's saying. I'm going to show you what the apostles taught and it's not what she's teaching. I'm going to show you what the Holy Spirit proved and it's not what she's doing. Right? So, this is the word of Yah. And that that day won't come on you suddenly because that's what's going to happen. You think good and well that you invest all your life earning, your life in a plot of land and that your whole heart won't be enwrapped in that. You think that the time when it's time for you to run and drop, drop your bag and go, that you're going to so easily see the signs of the time on your private land where you don't know what's going on in the world and nothing. Your eyes are closed. You don't invest in all your cares in the life on your land, that you're going to be willing to walk away when Yah says go? No, sir. All right. Because this is a trap. For it will come like a trap on all those who dwell on the surface of the earth. Now, when you read those, right, she's saying the whole world, the whole world. Yah has a certain type of way of speaking when he's talking about the whole world and when he's talking about the whole land that earth is synonymous with land and so you gotta go back in prophecy and see what y'all says because that's not biblically sound that the whole world is going to be destroyed because nowhere in prophecy does it tell you that it tells you that there is going to be places of safety it's telling you that all the nations will not be destroyed when babylon goes down so the destruction about that day of babylon destruction is not on the whole world is on the whole land true indeed after babylon goes down it will have an effect on the whole world but the whole world is not going to be destroyed revelations don't even teach you that watch therefore at every season what season what is y'all telling you to watch for what seasons praying that you might have the power to escape all these things that will happen. So what are we talking about? If this is gonna hit the whole world, which that's not the word for world, right? The whole world, then how is 36 making any sense? Cause that's the, that's the reason, that's the logic that she's trying to spew to you right now, that this is gonna happen to the whole world. So there's nowhere to escape, but yet the scripture tell you, watch for the season. Therefore, for every season, praying that you might have the power to escape all these things that will happen and to stand before the Son of Man. Does that make any sense, y'all? What? Where are we escaping to if there's no place of safety on this world? Don't make sense. All right. Revelation 3. So like I said, I'm just touching this a little bit, right? I'm like, man, and when I slam this, it's just hands down. And those of you that want to learn the truth, continue to open up your ears and extend it to your heart. Get rid of your wicked heart and the cares of the world. Stop listening to this lying tongue that won't open up the scripture and just will quote verse here, verse there, verse there. So we, like I said, I'm going to go all over all verses. Revelation 3. And the angel of the assembly in Sardis wrote, right, he who has the seven spirits of Elohim and the seven stars say these things. I know your works, that you have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Anybody go back and look in the history. What was the reputation of them being alive? They were rich. Wake up and keep the things that remain, which you were about to throw away. For I have found no works of, your per of yours perfected before my Elohim. Remember, therefore, how you have received and heard. Keep it and repent. That's the work that means. Repent. If therefore you won't watch, right? What watch are is repentance required? What watches, right, are we commanded to watch for in season that it's about repentance or an atonement or an atonement sacrifice or a covering of repentance or sin? Those are the three feast days that Yah, the three watches that he told us to come up out of the land of wherever you are and return to Jerusalem. Those are the watches. Those are the seasons, right? So he says, repent. If therefore you won't watch, I will come as a thief 
and you will not know the hour that I will come. Does that statement mean that nobody will know or the ones that don't repent and watch won't know? Okay. I'm a, I think I ended with this. There's so much more to this thief in the night. No man knows the day and the hour, but it will give you a little bit to show you that that ain't quite what he's saying. You got to keep reading because Messiah spoke in parables. First Thessalonians 5, 1 through 9. But of the times and the seasons, brother, I have no need to write to you. For yourselves know perfectly that that day of Yah is in this manner comes as a thief in the light. So read all the scriptures that talk about the thief of the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes on them. As a woman on travail with child. Who's the them? Who's the woman on travail with child? What's the sign? This is about Israel and Israel's destruction. And they shall not escape. What? Who's the they? But you, brothers, those that hear this word, are not in darkness. Right? That, that day should not overtake you as a thief. So when that day comes, everybody that's walking this earth, that's not walking in darkness, that is watching and keeping the seasons and times, right? They will know the day or the hour. Because not knowing the day or the hour is him coming like a thief. But if you do not walk in darkness, that day shall not overtake you as a thief. It means you will know the day or the hour. Okay, um, it's, it's not fair to say that just because someone, um, one of the statements said, just because someone has a business, um, one of them said, I don't think starting a business in a country that is weaponized against us as a people is a good idea. Just saying, wait on the Lord. Okay, that's what they said. Okay, that's not the one. Let me go to the other one. It said... We're cursed in the land until the Messiah returns. Prosperity in this land can only come if you serve the ruler of this world, which is Hashatan. So you're saying anyone who prospers, T. Clark, you're saying anyone who prospers in any kind of way can only come if you're serving Satan? That's not a fair statement to make because the Most High says, if you delight yourself in him, he will give you the desires of your heart. So... It's not fair and it's not righteous to say that just because someone prospers in any way that they are serving Satan. That mindset right there is what keeps a lot of our people stuck in a rut uh, financially and spiritually because the Most High said, delight yourself in him. He'll give you the desires of your heart. All right. So I'm going to agree with the man that made the statement. It's a very fair statement. He put the code of what Yah said according to what the punishment was, right? And so I'm saying, and as well as I'm going to show the word saying, she quotes this quote, if you delight yourself in him, he will give you the desires of your heart. We're going to go into that scripture and see what y'all is talking about, because I'm going to show you that it's talking about absolutely opposite of what she's trying to say, right? Now, I'm going to say again, y'all said, uh, you sold yourself into this slavery that we're in right now. Chattel slavery was his. You were supposed to be a servant and say, yes, master, and work hard, and just do what the man said. But then Satan got slick, right? And he gave you this false freedom to make you think that you was free, that you can come up. And, it's, and, and so this 50 years ago stuff that she's talking about, 100 years ago, your behind should have left Babylon because you had the opportunity to do it. All of y'all had an opportunity to come up out of Babylon and go do Yah, right? According to the word of Yah. And so what I am saying is that yes, according to the word, what he said, Everyone, yes, that is becoming very successful in Babylon, and I'm going to show you, is serving Satan, because that's where serving, certain, uh, certain Satan seat right now is ruling from Babylon, and his system, right, that he's choked on the neck of the whole world is underneath that system, and Babylon could have never become so great if it wasn't for the black man buying into that system, selling their souls. And so it was never intended for us to come up 
like that. And if y'all had blessed anybody to come up and become that successful in the land of, it, the land of our captivity, it was only for one reason, to help our people <laughs> get, return back home. That's it. That's it, y'all. All right, so let's go into this statement and see how she's twisting it up. And let's see, let's apply this statement according to what Yah says this means. And stop letting people quote one-liners and tell you this is what it means, right? Just, just speak away Yah's word without letting the Bible interpret the Bible. Without bringing witnesses to the word that she's speaking, right? And I dare anybody pull any scripture from the new and the old say he's going to bless us with the desires of our heart. If you, whatever you pray, you shall receive. And I'll show you how they're lying on the script. That all of that is based upon a condition. And that condition is that you ask according to the will of Yah and not your own lust of the world. And I'm going to prove that tonight. So if you delight yourself in him, he will give you the desires of your heart. Right? So that means that we should just go by, if we desire, that's her desire. True indeed. It's the desire of her heart. Understand that. Because Yah said this is the problem with these prophets. They're lying hearts, right? So let's go into that. Where is that quote from? That quote is from Psalms 37, right? And it's prophetical, y'all. So let's read the whole script. Let's put that verse in context of what Yah is trying to say. Verse 1, don't fret because of evildoers, neither be envious against those who work unrighteousness. What is this envy? That y'all saying, don't fret and don't be envy against them. What could we be envious of against evildoers, y'all? What is it that y'all, off the bat, what is it that y'all could be telling the righteous, don't be envious of and don't fret about? There's only one envy. Power, money, gain, position, property, things. That's the only thing. That someone could be envious about that y'all telling them it couldn't be about the evil, right? It, it must be the gain that they're making, right? These evildoers, right? For they shall soon be cut down like grass and wither like a green herb. I'm in three. Trust in Yah and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. What land is he talking about? Is he talking about Babylon? Is he talking about returning back to the wilderness? Where do we enjoy safe pasture? According, this is prophecy. What is David talking about that don't fret against evildoers, right? Don't, don't be envious, but do good. What is this good? Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Are you safe in Babylon? Are you safe buying land in Babylon? According to watchmen and all their prophetical watchmen reports, are you safe, right? Also, delight yourself in Yahweh, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Let's see. Commit your way to Yahweh. Trust also in him, and he will do this. What? What this is the desires of a heart? To dwell in the land and enjoy our safe pastures. Right? That's the way. That's the desire that your heart should be in. Watch this. Six. He will make your righteousness go forth like a light and your justice as the noonday, noonday sun. Rest in Yahweh and wait patiently for him. That word wait patiently, every time he said wait on Yah, does not mean stand still, right? That word wait comes from the word mekava, kave, which does not mean wait. It means hope in Yah. And the hope that you are supposed to have is what? He will give you these desires of your heart. That should be your hope. The land that you should dwell in that I promised to you as an inheritance to enjoy and save path. That's everything we're supposed to be hoping for. That's the kingdom, y'all, right? And so he says, rest in y'all and wait patiently for him. Don't fret because of him who prospers in his way. That's what you... That's what she's telling you. She's trying to make you envious, poor Israel. She wants to make you envious of their prosperous way. Where? In the land of your captivity. But he's telling you desire, right? The good land. The one that he told you to dwell in, in your safe pasture. The one that he said, I'm going to give you safety and peace. Not in the land of your captivity. 
you will not have safety and peace in the land of your captivity, right? So rest in Yah and wait patiently for him. Don't fret. This is the fret of the evildoers. This is the evil doing, y'all. Don't be envious of him who prospers in his way because of the man who makes wicked plots happen. This is a wicked plot. And I'm going to show you that this is a wicked plot. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Don't fret. It leads only to evil doing. For evildoers shall be cut off. But those who wait, not wait, those who hope for Yah shall inherit the land. What land is this talking about that she quotes? Delight yourself in Yahweh and he will give you the desires of your heart. Right? For yet a little while, the wicked will be no more. Yes, though you look for his place, he isn't there. Right? 12, the wicked plots against the just and gnashes at him with his teeth. That means that the wicked is speaking towards the righteous evil things that is making us envious. That's exactly what this devil is doing. She is plotting against the righteous ones of Israel and she's gnashing her teeth at us, meaning that she's making mockery of the condition that we're in and mockery of the thought of Yah's good way. Yahweh will laugh at him. Yah is going to get the last laugh for he sees that this day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and the needy. See what we're talking about? And that's what she's doing. She speaks down on the poor. And I'm going to let you hear more of this condescending um, um, a mockery of the poor man, right? To kill those who are upright in the way. Their sword shall enter into their own heart. Their bows shall be broken. So they're trying to, she's trying to pierce you with her bows and arrows, with the sword, right? These are the fiery darts of Satan that's coming out of her mouth. The venom that's poison to make your heart melt and be envious for what they got. Better is a, what is y'all talking about? Watch this, y'all. Watch this. It's opposite of everything she's saying. Better is a little that the righteous has in the abundance of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but Yahweh upholds the righteous. Yahweh knows the day of the perfect. Their inheritance shall be forever. And so whatever Yah is going to tell you to put your work in, your heart in, your labor in, is supposed to be towards his eternal inheritor, inheritance and not land in the land of your captivity. They shall not be disappointed in the time of evil. What time is that, y'all? What are we talking about? In the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. The ones that come out, he's going because he's going to feed us. Watch this backward talk that she keep talking. No faith when y'all says, trust me, hope in me. I've already declared what I'm going to do for you. You will not be hungry. You will not be thirsty. I'm going to feed you from the flock of Bashan. I'm going to break forth waters in the wilderness. I'm going to be your shade in the heat. But the wicked shall perish. The enemies of Yahweh shall be like the beauty of the fields. They shall vanish, vanish like smoke. So go ahead and buy your beautiful fields because you're going to vanish like smoke. And that's exactly what the prophecy has declared for you to put your investment, your life, your work earnings into land, in the land that is destined to go to nuclear war right now. For such are the blessed by him shall inherit the land. What land? Babylon? Those who are cursed by him shall be cut off. A man's goings are established by Yahweh. He delights in his way. That's the delight of your heart. Yah's Yah's way, and I already showed you that this is Yah's way. She can't show you one scripture to show you that her way to buy land in Babylon is Yah's way. That's where your delight should be. That's how you should establish yourself. That is your goings and doings. Through the stump, though they though he stumbled, he should not fall. But Yahweh holds him up with his hand. So he's telling you, oh poor and needy, just go with me. Trust in me. It might be hard on the way. You might stumble a little bit in your path on returning to me, but I'm going to hold you up. I'm going to show you mighty wonders. 
How can he show you mighty wonders if you don't fall just a little bit? How can he show you that he can lift you up if you don't stumble just a little bit? But he did not say that he's going to leave you down on the ground trampled with nothing. I have been young and now I'm old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken. That's what Yah said. He will not forsake the righteous. That's your job. Nor his children begging for bread. You will not be hungry. All day long he deals graciously and he lives. His seed is blessed. Depart from evil and do good. Live securely forever. Where is this living securely forever? What is this about? You try to get land and be secure from the destruction of Babylon. For Yahweh loves justice and doesn't forsake the holy ones. They are, they are preserved forever. But the children of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and live in it forever. What are we inheriting forever? Babylon, America? The mouth of the righteous talks of wisdom. His tongue speaks justice. All right. All right, 31. The law of his Elohim is in his heart. That should be the desires. The way of Yah and the law of Yah is what should be in your heart. None of his steps shall slide. The wicked watches the righteous and seeks to kill him. And that's what she's doing. She's watching us. She's watching all our moves and coming back with, uh, with, with, with lies, with venom to kill you. Yahweh will not leave him in his hand nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait, hope for Yahweh and keep his way and he will exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, you shall see it. I have seen the wicked in great power. That's right, great power, spreading himself like a green tree in his native soil, right? That's what he's doing. He's spreading himself right? Like a green tree. He's prospering, right? Like a green tree. What is the native soil is about? Amongst his people. He's prospering amongst his people, his native people. But he passed away and behold, he was not yet. I sought him, but he could not be found. Mark the perfect man and see the upright, for there is a future for the man of peace. As for the transgressors, they shall be destroyed together. The future, of, the future of the wicked shall be cut off, but the salvation of the righteous is from Yahweh. He is their stronghold in the time of trouble. What are we talking about? Once again, this is Jacob's trouble. Yahweh helps them and rescues them. He rescues them from the wicked and saves them because they have taken refuge in him. A psalm by David for memorial. All right, let's resume um, listening to this snake talk. And so how are you supposed to combat the devil when he's speaking half-truths, lies, and twisted perversions of Yah's word? Let's see some more of this lying devilish snake Medusa speak to you and try to destroy you with her fiery darts. He also says, seek ye first the kingdom of Yah and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Okay, so now she quotes the seek you first for the kingdom, right? And all his righteousness and all these things will be added. There she goes, do these one quotas. She just got finished saying, you can't just take one verse or two verses and just make, there it is. But um, if anyone listens to my message, I show you line upon line upon line upon line upon line. Precept upon precept upon precept upon precept. Here a little, there a little. So write it, divide the truth with all the prophets have said from the new to the old concerning this. So let's go into this quote. That she's just spewing out one verse here and one verse there and giving you a whole doctrine. But seek first Elohim's kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Let's see where this quote came from, y'all. Let's see. All right. The quote, Matthew 6, treasures in heaven. So we're going to put this in context. We're going to put this in context where this quote came from and what it means. 19, don't lay up treasures for yourself on the earth. This is Jehoshua was teaching when he first introduced himself to Israel as the great teacher. So he says, 19, don't lay up treasures for yourself on earth. What? 
where moth and rust consume and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consume and where thieves don't break through and steal. For, that, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. What's supposed to be in your heart? What is Yah determining should not be in your heart right now? But she's telling you, put this in your heart. Where what? Thieves and robbers break through. What's happening according to the prophecy that's going to happen to Israel in the land of our captivity? They're coming to plunder, y'all. They're coming to plunder, right? So the lamp of the body, this is the lamp of the body is the eye. People quote that out of context and make it say what they wanted to say. He's talking about what you put your sights on, right? And he's talking in lieu of laying up treasures on earth versus the treasures of heaven. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is sound, the whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is evil, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness, right? So he's talking about what you put your sights on, right? Laying up your treasures that's in your heart. That's the eye. That's the eye. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other or else he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both Elohim and money, prosperity, property, gain, and treasure. And so if you're working for these things because you have laid them up in your heart, you are not serving Yah. That's when Yahushua spoke. What is she speaking? What is she teaching? Because it's not the word of Yah. Everything that she's quoting to say, go get it, is a quote where he's telling you, don't go get it. All right, let's keep going. This is Messiah's teaching. Who's living this? Who's teaching this? 24, 25. Therefore, there's a therefore. I tell you, do not be anxious for your life. But she's teaching you anxiety. What you will eat. No, is this is about land and business. This is simply just about food, your daily bread, what you will drink, nor yet for your body, the clothes you wear, what you will wear. Isn't life more than food and the body more than clothing? But yes, she's telling you about property, land, things, businesses, get that money. And it's not for the daily needs of life. It's, she's not selling you what it is that you need in life. See the birds of the sky? that they don't sow, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Your heavenly father feeds them. Aren't you of much more value than they? Which of you being anxious can add one moment to his lifespan? Why are you anxious about clothing? What? Is he talking about land? These things, these things that she say go get. He's just talking about your simple needs in life, right? About clothing. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They don't toil, neither do they spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not dressed like one of these. But if Elohim so clothed the grass of the field, which today, today exists and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, won't he much more clothe you? You of little faith. So that's what she's preaching. Go get it yourself. Don't have no faith in Yah. When it comes to doing what Yah says, you gotta be anxious about how you gonna eat. How are you going to live? What are you going to do? But this is called no faith. And why she speak opposite of this? Therefore, don't be anxious saying what we will eat, what we will drink, with what will, shall we be clothed. For the Gentiles seek after all these things. For your heavenly father knows that you need all these things. What things? Man? A business? No. But seek first for Elohim's kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. Lion demon. Therefore, don't be anxious for tomorrow. For tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Each day's own evil is sufficient. Worry about today. Yah says you can pray for your daily bread. What you need today is what's important. Don't you ask me about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself if you walk and have faith in me. Right? Walk in my righteousness and I'll show you my mighty wonders because that's what Yahushua showed. So who's walking by this faith today, right? 
and each his own and evil today. Worry about what you got to overcome today for your evil. Worry about making decisions that's not evil today. Tomorrow is a whole new day. That's the word of Yah. All right. The word also tells us to occupy until he comes. In other words, keep busy, do something. It also says if a man don't work, he don't eat. That stands for women too. If a woman don't work, she don't eat. So when you consider all of that, you can't just take one or two scriptures and determine that it's wrong to have a business just because we're in the lands of our captivity. So then the same could be said for a job. It's wrong for us to get a job. Right. So she said also, what did she say? Occupy until I come. Let's go over that verse. And let's see what that means, right? Occupy. Okay. So she says, well, we're supposed to occupy until I come. Let's go into this word and see how she's also taking this way out of context. Let's go into the word occupy until I come. It comes from the Greek word. And once again, I'm not a Greek speaker. Pragmateumai. To busy oneself. Right. So we know that an idle mind is the devil's workshop. Who didn't say don't work? But y'all said don't work for things. Don't don't let that be the reason why you go to work every day. You set your sight, but you must stay busy. Right. From four, four, two, three, one, pragma, my right. Pragma, a necessary matter. What is pragmatic? Properly. The ancient mercantile term for trading, right? Exchanging to make gain. But mind you, is pragmatic, meaning what is you need. Work for what you need, right? Make decisions. Keep yourself busy according to your needs, not the desires of your heart. And you're never going to see anywhere where Yah says go get the desires of your own heart, right? Um, to do business, barter, trading, exchanging leveraging one thing for another to make a legitimate gain none of these businesses in america is a legitimate gain they are working selling and, and and buying off of somebody else's poverty off of somebody else's money the whole banking system that you got to get in and the trading system in babylon is not legitimate gain according to Torah. Taking out loans with interest is not legitimate gain according to Torah. The loans that you take out to start a business is some poor man's money that was put in the business according to Torah. To bear much fruit. The opposite of being fruitless because refusing to make trades by playing it safe, right? Sounds pragmatic. But once, a, once again, it's a necessary matter. From 431 means turning something over, making a good trade, i.e. to to good account, to administrate, manage profitably the capital of your disposal. So once again, y'all don't understand the rules of fair trade versus the way we do business in Babylon, right? What we do in Babylon is not fair trade, y'all. It's not at all. That's why the 10 nations are coming after Babylon, how they have done their trade all over the world. And it's unfair. Exchanges negotiated or transacted as business, personal or official from pragma, a deed or a matter. Cognate two, two, nine, pragma, right? Prasso, accomplishing by regular practice, your everyday needs, your everyday work properly, the habit needed to accomplish what is necessary, i.e. in the practical, reliable way. And what she's selling you is not practical. What she's selling you is not reliable. It's gonna fall. Um, from And it gives you all the words that it's called. Everyday business always has incalculable, ex, uh, eternal worth when done in faith nothing she's asking you to do has an eternal worth to it right by elohim's inworked persuasions meaning that what is necessary right the pragmatic trade your everyday 
exchange, your everyday barter. It's a giving and a taking, right? For what is needed, what is necessary, right? Accomplish what is necessary. It's practical and reliable, and it is by it's an it has an eternal worth when it is done in faith by Elohim's in-work persuasion. All right. So what is we know that we know this word pragmatic. And what she's saying is not pragmatic. And the brother that talked to her showed her why it's not pragmatic on what she's saying. Nor is it necessary. All right, so let's now go to the quote that she's quoting. Luke 19, Yahushua and Zacchaeus. Numbers, and it's Numbers 5. Okay, we're not reading that. That's showing you the law by which Yahushua was speaking to. One, he entered and was passing through Jericho. There was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and he was rich. He was trying to see who Yahushua was and couldn't because the crowd, because he was not short. Number one, he's in the land. Number two, so is Yahushua. Number three, he's rich in the land. But watch what he says. He ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. When Yahushua came to the place, he took up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for today I must stay at your house. He hurried, come down, came down and received him joyfully. When they saw it, excuse me, when they saw it, they, they all murmured saying, he has gone into lodge with a man who is a sinner. Now, why would they call Zacchaeus a sinner, right? Because of his business because of how rich he was they assumed something about him being rich man and that he was a tax collector he worked in israel and yahushua already made that about do i do i um he's a worker y'all he's a worker he's a tax collector guess what he didn't own his own business but he got rich by doing what he was supposed to be doing he was working for the roman empire right in israel that's why they call him a sinner zacchaeus stood up and said to to the master, behold, my master, half of my goods I give to the poor. So he's explaining why he's not a sinner. Though he's rich, though I'm rich, you don't think Yahushua already knew this? He already saw in this man's heart. Though he was rich and he worked for the tax collector, what did he do? He said, I give half of my goods I give to the poor. Do they do that? And are they teaching you to do that? They're teaching you to have your own, get your own, and do your own. This is the law of Yah, right? I give half of what I got to the poor. If I have wrongfully exacted anything of anyone, I restore four times as much. He's quoting the law that I don't get, I don't do trade by false gain. I don't do false balances. I don't get somebody to work for me real hard and pay them minimal wage while I make and get all the money. There is a law to Yah's trading system, and it's not Babylon's trading system. Today, salvation has come to this house because he is also a son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save that which was lost. Okay, so let's go. There's a therefore. We 11. As they heard these things, he went up and told a parable. Once again, Yahushua is speaking in parables. Yahoshua is speaking in parables. So don't let nobody just quote a Yahoshua quote and don't get no understanding because Yahoshua explains himself. Let's get this parable, right? As they heard these things, he went up and told the parable because he was near Jerusalem and they supposed that the kingdom of Elohim would be revealed immediately. So this is about the kingdom. This is a, a parable about the kingdom of Elohim. Not We're not in Babylon. We're not in the land of our cap captivity. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country, right? So the nobleman went into a far country. Where did he leave? The far country is where the nobleman went. But we know this is not talking about Babylon. This is not talking about physically, right? So he went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom. Who is this referring to? This is about Yahushua leaving us for a time. Where did he leave us from? From Israel. Did he leave us from Babylon? No, he left us from Israel. He said, I go to prepare a place, the kingdom, and to return. Where is he returning? Where did he leave him? 
he called 10 servants of his and gave them 10 mina coins and told them, conduct business until I come. Occupy, do what is necessary and pragmatic according to the good faith that I've instituted in your heart. But his citizens hated him. His people hated him, right? Who did they hate? They hated this nobleman who's represented as Jehoshua that went off to get a kingdom, right? So, but the citizens hated him and sent an envoy after him to go get him that went to a far country saying, we don't want this man to reign over us. What is this about? This is about the kingdom being set up to Israel and him being Yehoshua coming back, right? It happened when he had come back again, having received the kingdom that he commanded these servants to whom he had given the money to be called to him, that he might know what they had gained by conducting business. Is this talking about you doing business to gain money? This is a parable, y'all. Let's see what Yahushua is talking about when he says, occupy until I come. What is this thing that he's telling you to do until he comes? Because these people that he had 10 servants that he told his servants, what do the servants of Yah do? Do they do business for money? When Yah, Yah sends servants, what are their job? What are their job? Let's see, right? Let's see what he means, occupy until I come, right? This is a parable. Where am I? 16. The first came before him saying, Master, your mina has made me 10 more minas. He said to him, well done, you good servant. Because you were found faithful with very little, you shall have authority over 10 cities. Is this about money? Or is this about the souls of man doing a good work? What did y'all send servants to do? To work what? What field were they sent to work? The souls of men. To do good to what? To the poor, to the hungry. This ain't about business and making money, y'all. Right? Okay, let's see. Let's see if I'm, let's see if she's lying on the scripture or I'm letting the scripture interpret itself, right? So this is about him having authority over 10 cities. So if he said that he doubled his game because he gave him what? Where, where was it? He said, the first one, I'm losing myself. 10 servants. He gave him 10 Mina coins and told him conduct business. So what could the Mina coins be if he says that I've doubled it, right? And I gave you 10 more Mina. And that 10 Mina means that you shall have authority over 10 cities. Is this about money or is this about shepherding your sheep? All right. Lion bastards. 18. The second came said, your Mina my master has made five minas. So when Yah sent servants, they were there to shepherd and have authority over the sheep. To do what? I'm going to show you the work of the servant. So he said to him, and you are to be over five cities. So what's the mina? Is it money or is it the authority of, uh, he's telling he's going to be a judge and he's going to be a ruler in the kingdom. He's giving him his rank and authority in the kingdom. Is he talking about money? Or is he talking about the souls of men? Another came saying, my master, behold your mina, which I kept laid away in a handkerchief. For I feared you would you because you are an exacting man. You take up that which you didn't lay down and reap that which you didn't sow. What is he talking about? He's talking about authority over men. He left shepherds. He left serpents to rule his household and they don't want to give up authority. It's all about Yehoshua coming back and reigning and they don't want to give the authority. They didn't want to go and gather more souls until Yehoshua. They wanted to just hold the people in their hands, right? So he says, I fear you because you're an exacting man. You take up that which you didn't lay down and reap that which you didn't sow. He said to him, out of your own mouth will I judge you, you wicked servant. You knew that I am an exacting man taking up that which I did not lay down and reaping that which I did not sow, meaning I hired you to do the work for me. Then why didn't you deposit my money in the bank and at my coming? So if you didn't want to minister, do the work 
to my people, which is the poor and the needy and the widows. And if you didn't want to do the work when I put them in your hand, why didn't you let them go and let and, and let somebody else do the work? Why did you hold them underneath your authority? You wicked man, right? Then why didn't you deposit my money back in the bank and, and at my coming? If you didn't want to do the work, why did you continue walking in the authority in my name? I might have earned interest on it, meaning I could have put it underneath somebody else's authority and gain more souls. He said to those who stood by, take the mina away from him and give it to him who has 10 minas. What's the minas? Money? What's the work? Working jobs and laying for money? What's the field? The people. They said to him, Master, he has 10 minas. For I tell you that everyone who has will more be given, but from him who doesn't have, even that which he has will be taken away from him. But bring those enemies of mine who didn't want me to reign over him, over them here, and kill them before me. And that's exactly what he's going to do to this one. Because he ha they have taken up Yasmina authority in his name. They're not doing the work. And I'm going to show you what the work is to the poor and the needy, right? And they don't want to give the authority back to Yahushua to gain their souls. 14, man, going into another country. Uh, so this is Matthew 24, the parable. I'm going to show you the parable again. It gives you more explanation. This is not about money, y'all. Man, going into another country who called his own servants, a man going into another country who called his own servants and entrusted his goods to them. What's Yahushua's goods? Money or the sheep? So one he gave five talents to another, he, um, another one to each according to his own ability. Then he went on his journey immediately. He who reached the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. In the same way, he also who got the two gained another two. But he who received the one went away and dug it in the earth and hid it from, um, hid the money, um, the master's money. Now, after a long time, the master of those servants came and reconciled accounts with them. He who received the five talents came and brought another five, saying, O oh master, you delivered to me five talents. Behold, I've gained another five talents besides them. His master said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will set over you many things. Enter into the joy of your master, the kingdom. He also who got the two talents came and said, yeah, you delivered to me two talents. Behold, I gave, I have gained another two talents besides them. 23, and his master said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will set over you many things. Enter into the joy of your master. He also who had received the one talent came and said, my master, I knew that you are a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter. What is this about? Is this about money or his lost sheep? I was afraid and went away and hid your talent in the earth. Behold, you have what is yours. Wicked, wicked man. But this master answered him, you wicked and slothful servant. You knew that I reap where I didn't sow and gather where I didn't scatter. So how is y'all coming to reap? How is y'all gathering his remnant? Through servants. You ought therefore to have deposited the money with the bankers. And at my coming, I should have received back my own with interest. Take away therefore the talent from him and give it to him who has 10 talents. For to everyone who will be given and he will have abundance. But from him who doesn't have, even that which he has will be taken away. Are we talking about business and money y'all? No, we are not. Throw out the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. What are we talking about? But his word already established. What are we talking about? 31, but when the son of man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. He's gonna have authority and power and glory over his subjects. Before him, all nations will be gathered. And he will separate them one from another. And as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, he will set the sheep on the right hand, but the goats on the left hand. This is the day of judgment, y'all. Then the king will teach those, will tell those on his right hand, come, blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. 
For I was hungry and you gave me food to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Master, when did we see you hungry and fed you and thirsty and gave you drink? What is this about y'all? Y'all better go back and read Isaiah. I believe it's Isaiah 58 when he talks about the day of atonement and what the work is, right? It's just not the physical bread and the water. It's just not the physical clothing. It's just not bringing them into your physical house. It is giving them the word, the bread of life. It's giving them the waters of life. It's giving them the clothing to be clothed with righteousness. It's to bring them into the house of Yahweh. All right. When, when did we see you as a stranger and take you in or naked and clothe you? When did you, was you sick or in prison and come to you? The king will answer them, most certainly I tell you, and as much as you did it to one of the least of my brothers, you did it to me. That was the work, y'all. I don't see these people doing any of that. I see them gaining off of the poor, off of the sick, off the imprisoned, off the naked. 41, then he will say also to those on the left hand, depart from me, you cursed into the eternal fire, which is prepared for the devil and his angels. That's the devil and she's one of his angels. For I was hungry and you didn't give me food to eat. I was thirsty and you didn't give me drink. I was a stranger and you didn't take me in naked and you didn't clothe me, sick and in prison and you didn't visit me. Then they will also answer saying, Master, when did we see you hungry and thirsty and or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and didn't help you? Then he will answer them saying, most certainly I tell you, and as much as you didn't do it to one of the least of these, the least people is the poor people that she's uh, being sarcastic, snooting her nose to, talking down on. You didn't do it to me. These will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous, but the righteous into eternal life. So let's get into some Old Testament. What's the work? What is the work that Yehoshua would leave his servant? It's the act of a priest or a prophet or, or, or a servant or, or, or a messenger, right? Let's see what that work is, right? Nehemiah 13, tithes restored. How do we feed the hungry and the wicked? I mean, sorry, how do we feed the hungry and the poor and the needy and the fatherless and the widow and the homeless? How did that happen? It happened through the servants. Through what? Let's see. Do we take tithes and offerings and go buy our own land and just live on it by ourselves and give our children the best of everything? No, that's not the work of a servant. Here it is. 10. I perceived that the portions of the Levites had not been given to them, so that the Levites and the singers who did the work had fled everyone to his field. So when the people did not give their tithes and offerings to the priests, to the servants of Yah, so the ones that's doing the work, that's feeding them the bread and the water and becoming the sacrifice for them, bearing their sin, answering their questions on behalf of Yah, right? They didn't give their tithes and offerings. So therefore, the priest had to go and now live in his field. We didn't buy no fields, though. Yah gave that to us for an inheritance and it was in the land. Then I contended with the rulers and said, why is the house of Yahweh forsaken? I gathered them together to set them in their place. So the priest had a job. What's their job? Then brought all of Judah the tithe of the grain and the new wine and the oil and the treasuries. And I made treasures over the treasuries, Shilamiah the priest, and Zadok the scribe, and the Levites, Badiah. The next to them was Hanan and the son of Zahor, the son of Matanya. For they were counted faithful. This is the faithful servant. And their business, their overtask, was to distribute to their brothers. That's the work, y'all. Are they doing that? No, they're not. Remember me, my Elohim, concerning this. And don't wipe out my good deeds that I've done for the house of my Elohim and for its observances. That's the work, y'all. And I don't see them do it. So you can see the mockery of this woman talking about wait on Yah. No, the word is hope in Yah. And the hope is what I just read. The hope is about our return. 
Yah bringing us back to the inheritance of the land and his internal kingdom. And the work that is to be done is to the needy, the poor. And these people got so much money that they can buy two, three, four plots of land for the poor and let them live on it. They won't do that, but that's not Yah's word either. I don't see them giving back half of nothing. I don't see them giving back tithes and offerings because you know all the tithes and offerings wasn't for them. It was for what they needed. And then it went back to the people. This ain't about money, y'all. This ain't about business. And one, one of you said, wait on the Lord. Okay. So wait on him as in what? Um, do we just sit in our house and just wait and ponder and meditate and pray for him to pay our bills? Or do we go out and work? Even the, the story of the talents in scripture where it talks about uh, the one burying their talent in the soil. And the Most High called him a wicked and slowful servant because he expected you to go out there and grow that money. He didn't expect for you to bury it in the earth. I mean, the servant thought, he said, well, I figured if I buried it, when you came back, I'll give it to you. And so at least you'll have what you gave me. But the Most High said, thou wicked and slowful servant. Called him a wicked and slowful servant because they buried it instead of increasing it. The one who had one talent doubled it. The one with five talents doubled it. The one, uh, I might be getting the numbers um, a little mixed up there, but um, the, the point of the matter is we are not to sit back idly just waiting for the most high that said wait on the lord i mean this is what it says here wait on yah okay we are not supposed to sit back idly and just wait 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 he expects us to do 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 faith without works is dead in other words there is work to be done we can't simply say we have faith or that we're just going to wait on yah and do nothing give him something to bless your business can be simply um it could be something very simple Something very simple. It doesn't have to be a big major corporation. You can grow vegetables and sell your produce. I don't see how anyone could determine that that is wicked and serving Satan if you decide to sell produce. And then also the whole idea that we shouldn't buy land in the land of our captivity or that we shouldn't plant gardens. So if you don't plant gardens, what are your other options? Uh, wait for the government to take care of you, give you money to feed you, or you get a job and you go buy food that is grown by others, in some cases genetically modified or unhealthy for you, sprayed with chemicals. So you all, you two who sent the questions in, um, have literally made it seem like it's wicked and uh, satanic to own a business and to grow your own food. I want you to think about what you're saying here. Um, the scriptures that you are using are being taken out of context, okay? Babylon covers the whole earth. It's not just the U.S. And the whole idea that we're supposed to just wait on Yah and not do anything for ourselves, but just sit there and wait, that means you just want to starve, lay down, and die. And again, I don't mean to sound uh, just terribly awful to you all, but you have to understand how it sounds to me when you're telling me that I'm basically work worshiping Satan for owning a business or anyone else who owns a business or starts a business or has any uh, a level of prosperity at all is worshiping Satan, hmm. serving the ruler of this world, which is Satan. That is not a fair statement to make. I hope that you can rethink some of your thoughts on this. Um, don't take offense to what I um, am saying in response to what you've said. I'm trying to get you to think, okay? Because others may read your statement and think that there's some validity to it. There's nothing wrong with starting a business. If you got some produce and you want to sell it, if you want to grow produce, there's nothing wrong with that. Don't let anybody make you think it's wrong for you to plant some seeds in the ground because one of you said something about seeds as well, as if it's wrong to even get seeds and try to plant them in the ground. Nothing is wrong with growing your own food and if you have enough of it, sell it. Nothing wrong with that. So... Many times, you, you know, a person takes on a certain way of thinking and they want to uh, bind people to that. When I, when I tell people that it's a good idea to grow your own food or to buy land or what have you, 
I don't expect you to just do it because I'm asking. I'm just giving you an idea. If you choose to just not buy land and just stay wherever you're staying, whether you're renting or living with someone else, that is your prerogative, okay? If you choose not to grow food, but you'll just continue to grow it from the grocery store or wait for the government or whatever or somebody else to feed you, that is your prerogative. I'm not going to be angry at you. I'm not going to be upset at you. But neither do um, I want to see others discouraging others from doing something that the scripture didn't say anything was wrong with. I mean, there was even one passage that said that this captivity is long. Now, I know I was talking about a specific captivity, but it says this is a long captivity. Grow food. Build houses. That's what it said. So you hear this nonsense. Once again, she's supposed to be a servant of Yah. And she's just like, I'm just giving you ideas. You can listen to it. You can't listen to it. You can do it if you want. You can't. And look at the condescending speech that she's speaking to the to the so-called little people, to the poor people that, that can't, won't, or don't want to listen to her wise wisdom, right? Look at the nature and the, um, the mockery that she's speaking with and how she's speaking down to those that's content with what Yah has given them and not trying to come up in life, right? So she says, you know, don't take offense. I take offense to what she's saying because she's offending the word of Yah. I'm taking offense. And I'm going to continue to take offense and I'm going to continue to show the mockery and the lies of this lying prophet, right? And so she's like, I'm just giving you ideas. And what is else she's saying? Um, what is so wicked about buying land, right? I'm just giving you other options. I'm going to show you what's so wicked about buying land and then the land of your captivity. I'm going to show you, right? If I haven't already shown you, right? So she now she belittles this thing about what's so bad about just planting the seed, really? Really, some people don't have a, even even a, 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 a plant pot in a house because they live in such poverty. Are you serious? Look how she belittles this thing. What's so wrong about planting a seed? We know good and well what that takes. At least we know good and well that that's not possible. That's not achievable for Yah's people and on the masses. Only the rich. Only the rich. Right? And so she's just giving ideas, right? And then she goes to pursue a go and talk about Jeremiah's prophecy, right? Y'all said because the land is going to be 70 years, right? Now she goes, look at the double tongue. She tells you, well, it wasn't about the prophecy of today. That was about then, right? Truly, that prophecy does not apply to now. It was very specific. Y'all very clear when he's giving a double prophecy or a prophecy that is attached to just that circumstance, right? So now she goes in. And wants to use that prophecy after she clearly says, well, I know it's not really about today, but, but she gives a what if, right? And then now applies it to today. Lying bastard. Y'all did not tell us to do any of that. So there she is twisting scripture again, telling you, go back and study scripture and don't just do one line. But that's all she's doing. She's not even reading it, right? And like I said, all you got to do is just listen to her very carefully and you can see the double tongue, the hypocrisy in her own speech. In her own speech. So let's continue on with more of her nonsense and her lies and her venom that she's spewing out on the people again. Resume. Let me come back as well. I mean, she like she said, well, what are you going to do? Once again, if you don't do what she's telling you to do, she's asking you, well, what are your other options? How about the options that y'all told you to come out? How about that? Now, she's going to speak to that. And now when it comes to what y'all said, she, there's no faith. There's no works. There's no faith. There's nothing that exists that y'all speaks on how to walk by faith. It, it's just out the window. The Holy Spirit, Yah's mighty wonders, faith in him, how he can provide is out the window when it comes to option B, which is really option A, which is the only option that Yah told you, which is to come out of her and return. Right? So, so once again, here she goes acting, well, what else you going to do? There's nowhere else for you to go. Right? But then when you show her, that's not what Yah said. This is what she, this is the foolishness that she speaks against Yah's word. And so Yah's gonna smite this woman's mouth. Trust me, he gonna smite her mouth. And so you can't just take one scripture or one thought, one train of thought, because someone may have taught you this, and that's all you believe. This is why the scripture tells you to study your to study to show yourself approved. Now my thing is this, and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out cut this video off excuse me what if what you are talking about in terms of prophecy is another 50 years down the line 
what if we're looking at another 50 years? So within that 50 year period, what are your plans? Are you saying that within that 50 year period, nobody is to buy land, no one should be growing food, no one should be doing anything? Is that what you're saying? Because it really wouldn't make sense if that is the thought that is being put out there. If we got 50 more years, what if it's 100 more years? You're saying that it's wrong to grow food and it's wrong to buy land, it's wrong to start businesses? Think about what you're saying, okay? Revisit the topic, and I hope you can get some understanding by, from what I've said here because, again, um, a lot of prophecies are being uh, misconstrued. And another thing I wanted to say as well is everyone keeps saying that we've got to get out of Babylon. Like I've established, Babylon is all over the world. It's not just the U.S., okay? It's a system. But for those of you who say that we're supposed to trust Yah, um, to uh, take care of our needs and all this, that, and the other, and take uh, to get us out of uh, America. Think about this for a minute. The scripture already told us that when we are going to be gathered, that the Most High Himself is going to gather us from the four corners of the earth and put us back in our land. He didn't say it was going to be on your own dollar that you got to save up enough money for, that you got to be able to afford it, um, that if you can't afford it, if you can't buy the plane ticket, if you don't have enough money for the cash, if you can't do it, then you're just out of luck, fresh out of luck. The word did not tell us that we were going to have to afford it ourselves because that would leave millions of people. I'm talking millions. I mean, we have 40 million so-called black people alone here in the U.S. Now, what about all of the other regions of the world to where our people were scattered? Are you saying that the Most High wants all of these people to depend on their own ability to afford to buy land in another country or in Israel uh, or uh, depend on, excuse me, um, our ability to afford to even travel because a lot of people can't even afford to travel from one place to another within their own state, much less flying to another country or another region of the world. And not just that, once you get there, how will you take care of yourselves? None of that fits with prophecy at all. I think it requires less faith. I mean, I'm sorry, I think you have less faith um, if you think that we are supposed to do this on our own. It takes faith to actually believe that Yah is going to do what his word said he's going to do. He said he's going to gather. And he didn't say that we were going to have to do it ourselves. Um, the scripture where it talks about these other nations, it seems like it's going to be on their dollar to get us to where we're going. Or, or Yah is going to do it. It didn't say that if you can't afford it financially, then you're on your own. So for those of you who think that we got to hurry up and save up enough money to get out of Babylon, that might be easy for an individual to do or maybe a small family. But there are um, large populations of our people, seniors and single mothers and handicapped people who cannot afford it. And to say that they lack faith because they are not um uh, thinking that they can afford or they know they can't afford to just leave the country and go somewhere else. First of all, the scripture didn't tell us to go over there and occupy any land that is ran by Gentiles, whether you're trying to get back to Israel or whether you're trying to get back to um, Africa. When we are gathered, we're going to be placed in our own land by the Most High Yah. And until then, we have to stand still where we are and see the salvation of Yahuwah. That's what the word says. It says, stand still and see the salvation of Yahuwah. It didn't tell us to get to, get to run in and flee Babylon. You have to understand what fleeing Babylon means. And so um, thank you for your, your comments uh, to the two viewers who posted those. Um, again, I hope you don't take offense to my um, reply here. But again, there's a lot of lack of understanding in regards to what we are to do in the lands of our captivity. And I hope that I brought clarity uh, to at least some of uh, those who may be confused by what it is we're supposed to be doing. With that, I say shalom. Now, if that ain't a bunch of hypocrisy that I ever heard in my life, y'all, y'all think that this woman is so wise, but it's really insulting that y'all actually hear, listen to this woman and can't see the, the, the hypocrisy coming out her mouth. Okay, first of all, all I hear is a bunch of I don't think so's. Um, it seems like she's going to tell you what it's not, but still can't tell you what it is, right? Um, just a lot of opinions. That don't sound like a servant of Yah, right? And so um, 
She's telling you how we gonna get out of Babylon, right? So when now when it's come to this trusting in Yah, now it doesn't exist. So now she's gonna speak against those that's telling you to trust in Yah. What Yah said, she's gonna be like, well, how are you gonna do that? What is that? What do you mean trust in Yah? Are you crazy? No, 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 no. Um, we're gonna talk about this and the he's gonna gather us for the four winds. He, I must I speak to that. If you want to know how he's going to gather us by the four winds, please go back and look at my, come out of her, my people, parts one through five. I give you every scripture that determines how he's going to gather us. But I'm going to give you a few here tonight just to give you a precept. Because I'm going to show you how this woman ain't read one word of y'all, right? Just spewing lies out of her mouth and twisting and perverting y'all's word, right? So she got lots of opinions. Now, all of a sudden, can y'all hear it now? She's telling y'all to buy land. This woman is having seminars with the private of, of her people that's like um, what linked to her private page. How much you got to pay to be a, a part of her private page, right? To buy land, right? But those people, those people that she's speaking to, that she's saying buy land, plant seeds, get vineyard, build houses, all of that, all of a sudden, they too poor to get a ticket. All of a sudden, those people that she's telling you can buy land and get your own business. The same amount of money that you would use to buy land, get your own business, store up your own food and all of that. You know how much money that, you know how much money that is? You know what you can do with that? You know how many tickets you can buy and how much land you can buy? Mm -hmm. This don't make no, all of a sudden, when it comes to not doing her plan and trusting in Yan doing his plan, where's the money? Where's this money that she's telling y'all get? Because whatever she's telling you, it ain't your money. She's telling you how to borrow and loan. And this is a plan from Satan. That's how I know she's an agent. This is a plan from Satan. This is a plan from the government we, we under. And it's not fair trade. It's wicked. It's wicked. It's wicked against Yah's covenant. So now all of a sudden, she want to count the number of how many poor, the homeless and the needy and the people that can't walk now and all of this. And I done showed you the scriptures how Yah said he's going to take the lame and he's going to bring them back. How he's going to take the dumb how he gonna take the um the weak, how he's gonna take the, the old and the young and the homeless and the poor and the needy and the fatherless and the young. He's already explained that he's gonna do that. This trust in his word to bring us back, right? But now all of a sudden, 40 million people in America that's poor and needy, how they gonna get on a plane? How they gonna how they gonna survive? How how they gonna buy land? And, and so she says, first of all, now y'all didn't tell us to get no land ran by Gentiles. That's absolutely crazy. That's exactly what she's teaching you, y'all. She's telling you to buy land, on stolen land at that, right? Stolen land. So now you become a conspirator of the stolen land and the death that was shed on that land to get that land, right? So she's telling you, y'all didn't tell you to go back and buy land in the land of no Gentiles, but yet that's exactly what she's teaching. Mm -hmm. It's hypocrisy, y'all. Y'all mm -hmm. can't see the, the tongue, the double tongue coming out this woman's mouth. Mm -hmm. So then she's the stand still and see y'all. If another person quote that to me, I swear, I'm man. If y'all, please, please y'all, please smite these people and their double tongue. Stand still don't mean don't move and do nothing. But she uses that quote when what are we supposed to do? Stand still and do nothing. The stand still and see the salvation of y'all is talking about when we are at the waters, trapped between the army in the holy land. Right? And that Yah is going to open up those waters and make a way. After you escape out of the land of your captivity. That, and that stand still means don't fear. Have faith and watch the mighty wonder that I do when I get you to cross those waters. And that's the prophecy of today. All right, so let's go more into this. That's house of these. House of these. We're going to talk about that. That's a house of a thief. Luke 19. Yahushua cleanses the temple, right? So they're supposed to be watchmen. They're supposed to be servants of Yah. So whatever it is that they're setting up in, in, in essence is really the sanctuary of Yah, the house of Yah, the household, the body. Wherever they set it up, whether it be on their house, in their um, backyard, or in, in some building, the house of Yah, the sanctuary. So we're in um, Luke 19.45. Yahushua enters in Jerusalem, the sanctuary, right? The house of prayer, that's what they setting up. 
he entered into the temple and began to drive out those who bought and sold in it. 46, saying to them, it is written, my house is a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. Now we know what took place. People were selling to the poor for salvation. They had goodies on the table, all the things that they were going to need to get into salvation, right? They were selling merchandise in the temple to the poor when people came to them, right, to do what? Get prayer, supplication, needs, tithes and offerings for the poor and the needy. They came to get. But before you can get to even what you came to get, they over here selling you a bill of goods. Y'all call this the house of thieves. That's what they are, a house of thieves. All right, let's move on. John 2 and 13, the Passover and the Jews was, uh, um, the Passover of the Jews was at hand and Yahushua went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple those who sold oxen. They sold sheep. They sold doves and the changes of money city. He made a whip of cords and threw all of them out the temple, both the sheep and the oxen. And he poured out the changes money and overthrew their tables. To those who sold the doves, he said, take these things out of here. Don't make my father's house a marketplace. That's what these people have done. That's what all your leaders are doing. They got something to sell you every single last one of them. They selling you a bill of goods. They got, it's not oxen, it's not sheep. They got videos. They got CDs. They got merchandise. They selling you land because every land that she's um, um, selling you, you know she's profitizing off of that. She, she's a realtor. That's her business, right? She got something to sell you. She's selling you. What, what else does she sell? All these people. Um, we got um, Ishikar selling you um, 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 <laughs> leaves from Africa. They selling you head wraps. They're selling you dreams. They're selling you delusions. And it ain't got nothing to do with your salvation. They selling you meditations, right? They're selling, they they selling everything. They sell, they selling um getaway packets on feast days. They are selling um holy garbs, right? They're selling everything, but what Yah has told them to sell you. This is called the house of thieves. That's the house of thieves. She's a thief. All right, all right. So now she, like I said, she puts zooms to tell you what it's not but not going to explain you what it is. She tells you to go and study. She don't want to um, divulge to you how y'all say he's going to gather us. So I'm going to give you just a couple of things, just a couple of things to look into. And then if this intrigues you to learn more about y'all's word, go to my own lectures. I explain it all. I go into the four winds and what that is, right? So let's, let's get some um, understanding. I'm not here to sell you lies and twist y'all's word. He will gather us by his four winds. And from the four corners. So we're going to take, I'm just going to take a few. Not all of them. I've already done it all. I'm not going to do this twice. She's betting on, like I said, that I make these things so long. Y'all would never listen. I get it. So I'm just give you a little bit here and there. That's all right. I'm only here for the elect, not for the majority. I don't want her, her 150,000 um, 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 listeners and parishioners. I just want the elect. One here, one there. A city here. One from a city, two from a family. From each ministry. I'm pulling y'all's elect. And I'm getting them, the boy watchman. I'm getting y'all sheep out of your flock. All right, so let's let's look at some understanding on what y'all have said. Just to give you pause. Matthew 24. This is where one of the statements come from. 31. And he will send his four angels. Excuse me. He will send his four angels with a ground, a sound of a great trumpet. What's the trumpet? That means trouble is coming. When the trumpet glow, grow, um, blows in Israel, there's only two things that the trumpet is for. War and a gathering for the people to move. War or to, to um, exit out of the land from one land to another. That's what the trumpet is for. And they will gather together his chosen ones from the four winds. What's the four winds? From the four winds, from one end of the sky to the other. So here is the hypocrisy in what she's saying. She keeps telling you that the whole world is going to be destroyed. But at the end, now she presumes to tell, where's the rapture now? No more rapture, right? She's going to tell you about the gathering, right? See how she switches and chooses, right? The gathering to his land, right? But so if, if so where's the gathering then? Where's the gathering in our land? If the whole world 
is going to be destroyed. So where is he gathering the chosen from the four winds to one end of the sky to the other from two? Where is that, y'all? 32. Now, from the fig tree, learn the parable. You guys, if you want to learn the parable of the fig tree, because it is a, it is, it is explaining what's the four winds in detail. And that is also in, I believe, Matthew 24 or 25. And I go through that in the coming of the Son of Man. I go through all of Matthew 24 to show you the parable of the fig tree, that no stone shall be left upon another, right? When its branches now come um, become tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is nigh. And the word summer in the Hebrew means the end is near. It all is, when, when is this happening? When is the end gathering, y'all? What season is that out of the three watches? What season is the end gathering? That's supposed to be during Shavuot when we bring our fruits worthy of repentance. Where are we supposed to bring our fruits? To the house of Yahweh. Where? Back to the land. It's a pilgrimage back to the land, right? To do what? To go and renew the covenant. How do you renew the covenant? You got to repent. Atonement is given. Go back and learn the law, y'all. All right. So this gathering, four winds. I go through this. This is coming from my come out of her, my people. This is in part four. I go through the, all of the scriptures. There's some that I go through in other parts about the four winds. So Ezekiel 7, 1 through 7. Moreover, the word of Yahweh came to me saying, also, you son of man, thus saith Yahweh Elohim to the land of Israel. An end. The end is come on the fours. What is the fours? The four, the four nations we were scattered in by the four beasts that rose up out the sea, y'all like four corners of the land now the is the end on you so when he's saying that the end of the fours right the four corners of the land where he's going to scatter us an end is coming to those lands that he scattered us right that's not the whole world and he said that end of them is the end on you i will send my anger on you and i will judge you according to your ways and i will give you all your abominations so these, when he says he's going to gather us by the four winds, he's saying by the circumstance of the four winds. What's that? Keep reading. It's an end. It's a, it's a war. My eyes shall not look with compassion on you. Neither will I have pity, but I will give your ways on you and your abomination shall be in the middle of you. And you shall know that I am Yahweh. This is when y'all said, I will have pity on you no more. What day is that? That he said, I will not have compassion on you. I will not have pity on you anymore. That's the last end, the last tribulation. This is the last days. Watch. It says, Thus saith Yahweh Elohim, an evil and only evil, behold, is come. An end is come on you. That means the kites, the summer. The end is come on you. It awaits you. The end. Behold, it comes. What are we talking about? Jacob's trouble. When Matthew said there will be a tribulation like never was before. On who? The whole world? No. On Israel. The whole land. The whole earth is Israel. The doom is come to you, O oh, you that dwell in the land. The time is come. What land is it talking about? The day of trouble, panic, destruction, or turmoil is near. Not cheer, nor the shout of mountains, right? This is about Jacob's great trouble. Did I miss something here? Give me a second. No, I'm not missing something. I decided not to put it all hidden here. If y'all want to know more about what the fours is, what the end is come, the great drink of trouble, the four winds, the four horses, man, y'all don't get it. What are these four carvers? What are these four masons, right? What are these four horns and the four carvers? Four nations are rising up, four beasts. Here's Daniel 5. I believe that it's also seven for some of you that's reading King James 2 through 3. Daniel spoke and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds, the four spirits of heaven strode up out of the great sea. Where do we read that in the New Testament? In Revelations, what's striving up out the sea? Beast, what does beast mean? Nations, how? Through war, watch this. And the four great beasts were turned up from the sea, different from one another. So in Daniel, we were scattered by these four beasts. We know who those four beasts was. But if you read the prophecy, he said, by these four winds, four spirits, four nations driving up out the sea, that's how I'm going to gather you. So how was we scattered, y'all? It was through war from one nation fighting against another. 
and we got scattered inside those wars in the lands that we lived in. All right. I'm in Ezekiel 5, 1. O son of man, take a sharp sword. You shall take it as a barber's razor to you, and you shall cause it to pass through your head and on your beard. Take then balances to wait and divide the hair. A third part you shall burn in the fire in the midst of the city when the days of the siege are fulfilled. And you shall take a third part and strike it with the sword around about it. Do you think this is the um, destruction of us going into um, uh, our slavery? No, this is the last destruction of today. I'm going to prove it. This is the two-thirds prophecy, and he's showing you how he's going to do it, right? So one-third is going to be burned in the fire. That is in Babylon, right, in the city. That is the destruction coming upon us in the lands of our captivity. When the days of the siege are fulfilled, what siege? The siege that Yahushua spoke about, right? Uh, and you shall take another third part, one-third, and strike the sword around about it. So those don't going to get burned up by fire, he's coming with the sword. He's coming with the sword, y'all. He already said that what a thousand of you is going to flee at five. You're going to run and flee like horses, like swift horses, because I told you to leave. And a third part, you shall scatter to the wind. So I show you in prophecy that those, everyone that's making it out, one third makes it out. Two thirds get destroyed in Babylon. One third makes it out. But that one third, the remnant is still in there, right? Y'all survived the destruction of Babylon. But because you didn't leave when y'all said leave, you're going to be scattered all over. But most of y'all are going to be fleeing all the way through Africa. Some of y'all might go through Europe, but y'all told you it was one place to go. So those that be obedient won't be in a scattered state. We'll be where y'all told us to be. The rest of y'all going to be in a scattered state trying to get back to the place. Where's the way to Zion, right? So that one third that's coming out of Babylon, right, is a third part you shall scatter to the wind, what wind? And I will draw out the sword. What does it mean when he'll gather you with the, with the wind? It's a sword coming against you. It is war. You shall take of a few in number and bind them in your skirt. So out of that one third, there's a few in number that he's going to bound in his skirt, right? Of these again, you shall take and cast them into the midst of the fire and burn them in the fire. From it shall a fire come forth and into all the house of Israel. This is the last remnant, the 144,000 that's going to cross those last fires and not burn. All right, let's get some more. All right, we are seven now. Therefore, thus says Yahweh, Yah, Yahweh, because you are turbulent more than the nations that are around you, and you have not walked in my statutes, neither have kept my ordinances, neither have done after the ordinances of the nations. So what could this be talking about? Is this talking about, no, this is talking about what Yah is gonna do to us while we were in the nations. While we were in the nations. We are not in Europe like that. We are not in Scandinavia. We are not in, um, in Switzerland like that. We are not in Greece like that. We are not in Rome like that. We are not on this side of the world like that. Right? Neither have you kept my ordinances, neither have you done after the ordinances of the nations that you are around. Thus, therefore, thus saith Yahweh, behold, I even I am against you. I will execute judgments in the midst of you, in the sight of the nations. So this judgment that Yah said he's going to do in Ezekiel is happening to you within the nations. I will do it to you that which I have not done, and whereunto I will do not any more like it. So this is the great tribulation like never was before. Never. Never, y'all. This is the last tribulation that we're speaking about in Ezekiel. That he says there's one more scattering because of all your abominations. Therefore, the father shall eat the sons of the midst of you and the sons shall eat their fathers. And I will execute judgments on you. And the whole remnant of you will I scatter to all the winds. There's another scattering because you Negroes didn't leave when y'all said to leave. You didn't return to the place where he told you to leave because you got them trying to teach you to go to Africa and not where y'all told you. And I showed you in the prophecy that after he's done with Babylon, he's coming through Africa to get you. The beast. Therefore, as I live, says Yahweh, surely because you have defiled my sanctuary with all your detestable things and with all your abominations, therefore will I diminish you, neither shall your eyes I shall my eyes spare, and I also will have no pity. When is this? It didn't happen yet. This is last time prophecy for the last remnant of Israel, and he said he's going to destroy most of us. 12. 
and a third part of you shall die with pestilence and with famine shall they be consumed in the midst of you and a third part shall fall by the sword that's the one third that's coming out but out of that one third he already said he's binding up a few that's the remnant and a third part will i scatter to all the winds and will draw out the sword after that's how he's gonna gather you dumb ignorant stubborn negroes if you keep listening to them that's how he's gonna gather us thus shall my anger be accomplished this is the accomplishment this is lamentation, y'all. This is Matthew 24. This is the accomplishment. This is Revelations when he said, um, one third of this, one third of that, but waste not the wine and the oil. That wine and the oil is the 10%, the one tenth that's coming out the one tenth, which is the tithes and the offerings. We are the tithes, we are the offering. Thus shall my anger be accomplished, and I will cause my wrath towards them to rest, and I shall be comforted. And they shall know that I am Yahweh, have, that Yahweh has spoken in my zeal when I have accomplished my wrath on them. That's how he's going to gather you, y'all. And the reason why he's gathering like that, because you refuse to come out and you want to be partakers in the land of Babylon. And you want to be partakers in their system and their wickedness and their evil doings. And you, you are letting this evil woman, who is nothing but speaking the word of that evil woman, right, of Babylon to sell you flatteries. And I'm going to show you the word of Yah. What she's teaching is against the word of Yah. All right. I'm trying to make it short. I can speak forever on this. It's like endless scripture. She ain't quoted nothing right. So she says, Yah never said there's something wrong with buying land. Yes, he did. He did say there's something wrong with buying land in the land of the old captivity that was stolen land in the first place. Woe to a man that builds a house by wicked gain. That land that you are buying, you are buying from thieves. All right. So Isaiah 30 and 10, I go through Isaiah 30 and 10 and, and the come out upon my people. And Daniel 11 and 32, I go through in the Mika Code. And I go through a lot more understanding about this thing about buying land in the land of your captive, what Yah said about it. So we're going to get into it. I'm going to give you some Hebrew and I'm going to give you some English. And then we're going to read a little bit of it so you can get some understanding. I'm not trying to load on you because I see that um, after just like 20 minutes of Deborah's smart Alec speech, you can't sit and hear the word of Yah. After an hour of listening to her um, <laughs> bathroom husband, prophesize great wondrous movie hollywood you can't hear the straight word of yah for five hours i understand i'm trying to make it short so let's get some understanding all right so i'm gonna read this in hebrew i'm a little slow but we're gonna get it and i'm gonna show you what it means but it's one word that i want to pull out to you right so it says i shall amru la roim lo tiru wa La Chazim, right? So what that means is those that say to the seers, to the prophets, to the watchmen, right? Don't see and you don't envision to us, right? That's what it's saying. You don't see this. Don't see this. Don't say you see this and don't envision this to us. Don't tell us these things. Lo Tachazu Lanu. Don't prophesize to us, right? So the word is from chazon or chazon. This word is um, also the um, envision or prophecy to us. Don't prophesize to us nechanot. The word comes from nachon, means right things to us. Don't tell us what is right. Dibru lanu chalchut chazon. Machatalut, right? So it's saying don't speak to us. Don't prophesize to us right things. Speak to us chalchut smooth things right or hip or flattery chaze, right and these things and prophecies these prophecies or these dreams of deception of lies right and so we're gonna go into what that means this word halkut. what is these things that y'all are saying don't prophesize to us but you're telling the other false prophets to, to, to talk to you smooth things speech of flattery right Daniel 11 and 32 reads like this. Hamarshi, Hamarshie, Brit, right? So this means this is the wicked, the wicked ones of the covenant, right? The wicked 
of the covenant. Yachanif be chalachut ve'im yodea elohai yachazko be'ase. Right? Chaziko. Right? And so it says, and the wicked ones of the covenant. Right? This word is yanef kanaf, which means that they will become polluted or corrupted. So these are ones that are corrupted, wicked, corrupted people that are against Yah's covenant. Where did Yah say he's going to stand? We're going to go into it, right? So it says they will become corrupted in this chalachut. Same word here. This word is chal, um, chalachut. This word is chalachut. So he's saying that the wicked of, it, of us is going to become corrupted against the covenant. Those are wicked against the covenant are being corrupted in this um kalkut, this smooth thing, this flattery. And im yodim Elohim, and those in, in the people, the am, I'm sorry, the am yadea yade elohe, and those people that know their Elohim, yik ziku will be strong, ve asu, and they will do. They will take action. What will they do? So we're going to get into this with this thing, this cult, right? That you are telling the prophet, don't tell us, speak to us smooth things. The things you want to hear, don't tell us that, right? What is this thing, the cult, that the wicked that are against the covenant are, are going to pollute themselves with the flattery? All right. This word cult, we're going to look it up. Cult, it means a portion of ground, field, property. I know the word. It exists here in Israel. It means a piece of the pie. Like get your piece of the apple pie in America. When we use that term in America, get your piece of the pie. What did that mean, y'all? To get your piece of the pie was to get your piece of land or your business in America. And so the word is, it comes from the root word kelik, which means a piece, a portion, a part, a dividing part. But in Hebrew, as it is being used, it is simultaneous with a smooth thing. Why is it parable for smooth thing? Because a plot of land is a smooth piece of a ball spot, a smooth spot of land that you want to get. Get your smooth spot, your piece of land that's smooth, right? That's why it's called hypocrisy or smooth or flattery, right? Now, you don't believe me? I'm going to show you in the word what this word kalkut me. But before I do that, I want to read it to you in scripture. Right? I want to read to you not just the one verse, the, the whole verse to see what it's talking about. Give me one second here. So Isaiah 33, I'm going to give you some variations of what it's saying. But I've already read to you the interpretation of it, and I'm going to show you more in the Hebrew. The New International Version. They say to the seers, see no more visions. That's what y'all saying to me. And to the prophets, give us no more visions of what is right. Tell us pleasant things. Prophesize illusions, right? What's that illusion or the delusion that y'all said y'all will prophesy? One second. New King James Version. Who say to the seers, don't you don't you do not see, and to the prophets, do not prophesy to us right things. Speak to us smooth things. Prophesy the seats, right? That's what we got going on here, right? Contemporary English version, and I have said to the messengers and the prophets, don't tell us what Yah has shown you, and don't preach to us the truth, what we want to hear. Just say what we want to hear, even if it's false. That's one inter that's that's how you would say it right now in contemporary English, right? The JPS Tanakh 1970. They say to the seers, see not, and to the prophet, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak to us smooth things, prophesize delusions. And that's what I'm trying to show you guys over and over and over again. That's they know the, the, the they know your heart. These demons is the devil selling you your heart. The heart, your heart's desires, which is her desires. She is a minister of Satan and she is an agent of this government selling you plots of land. And she has inside information on how to get the the the, the the most out of nothing to help you guys sell you this dream. This lying delusion. All right. So let's read the whole thing now. We in Isaiah 30. 
Woe, rebellious children, says Yahweh. You execute a plan, a counsel, but not from me. This is the plan that the boy is trying to give you and pour over and inspire you with a vain image or a vain covering, right? So they are inspiring you by, by, by their inspirational speech with vanity, with an empty image or a covering, meaning a protection, and not of my spirit to the intent that they are captured with sin to sin. So this thing that she's selling you, you're going to be captured, but it's going to be sin on top. Why is it sin to buy land? I'm telling you, it's sin to buy land in Babylon because it's stolen land on top of that. You are paying thieves money to get land that they stole and murdered from. Why go, who go down to Egypt and my mouth you didn't speak? Is this talking about Egypt of today or is this talking about Egypt, what we living in now? Egypt is another word synonymous for the house of bondage. We are not in Egypt today. We are not in the house of bondage in Egypt today. Egypt today is Babylon. But the going down in Egypt, right, is where you, this plan is, is a, a, a going down means going down south. Down south in Egypt, right? And did not ask to be strong in a place of safety of Pharaoh and seek shelter or refuge in the shadow of Egypt. So that's what it is. You are looking for a place, a place of safety. We're talking about a land here, a place of safety um, underneath the, the shadow of Egypt. What is the shadow or the covering, the image of Egypt? It means underneath this system, y'all, right? So buying land in America, you got, just like the brother said, you got to go inside the system of this beast, which is Egypt today, which is Pharaoh. And you got to do a whole lot of bit, certain business. It's not just working a job and pay your little taxes. This is much more than that, y'all, right? And to get shelter, a place of refuge. What are we talking about here, y'all? For the place of safety of Pharaoh will be your shame and shelter in the shadow of Egypt, your humility. So you that is going to this, going along with this plan and inspiring people to get what? A place of safety. Seek shelter and refuge underneath the shadow, underneath the system of Egypt, not the whole world, of Egypt, right? Egypt is the house of bondage. Where you was in a house of bondage, this is going to be your shame. This is going to be your humiliation. For their princesses are as Zoan and messengers of Hannes, they will come. What is that talking about? Go and look at what Zoan and the Hannes are. Those are, those are the people that went down and started plantations in the fields of Egypt. Those are in the southern borders, cut off where the fields of Egypt are, where their good land is, right? Um, all were ashamed like a fox. So these are the princesses of Egypt. The rulers of us are going down and sending messages to say, come, come get your plot of land. We are shamed like a foul smell on a people that could not benefit them. Neither help nor profit, but shame and disgrace. All were ashamed. Y'all is going to do this to all of y'all that buy land in Egypt. The burden, the vision of the beast in the south is the land. Is misfortune or trouble? What beast? The beast that's coming up against y'all in the land that you in. Your shame. This is going to, your burden, your vision. This prophecy, prophecy plan that y'all are doing is going to be misfortune, trouble, and distress. The young lion from where the viper and the fiery flyer serpent, they will carry their riches on their shoulders of the donkey and their treasures on the humps of camels to the people that they shall not benefit them. They're telling you, come get your land and take all your goods and bring them to this land and reestablish yourself. Plant some seeds, grow food, start your own business in America. Nowhere does it say this is not evil. Yes, it does. All right. Y'all cause this sin. Seven. The help of Egypt is vain and to no purpose. Therefore, I have called this Rahab, arrogance. What? They're sitting still. Because what did y'all say? Don't stay. Leave Babylon. Get out of her. Come out of her. Let's see what this is about. Now go, write it on the tablet before them in a the book, decree it that it may be to them in the time to come for a witness. And I'm here reading it, reading it out the book as a witness against all of y'all. For this people, they are rebellious, these sons, deceptive sons, sons who refuse to listen to the instruction of Yah, which say to those, don't see, and to the envisioners, excuse me, to the envisioners or the prophets, do not envision right things to us. Speak to us smooth things, a field. Speak to us a plot of land, a ball spot, a lying visions. 
step aside out the way, incline yourself out of the path or this course that you're on. And that's what I'm pleading with you people. Stop yourselves from this. Don't do it. It's going to be a trap for you. Thus says this prophet Zebiah, and by all the prophets that spoke, causing the Holy One of Israel to cease from before you. This thing that you're going to do is going to put sin on your head, the sin of Babylon, right? And you're going to get her plagues for being a murderous thief, stealing land that's not yours. You're going to be a partaker in this wickedness, right? And so you are causing the Holy One to cease from before you because he said, I'll go before you with the Holy Spirit to bring you out of the land of your captivity. You are stopping him. It is exactly what we said in the wilderness that we'd rather go back to the land of milk and honey. It was better there. So you will cause the Holy One to stop from going before you and leading you out the way you should go. All right, 12. For like this is the Holy One of Israel, on account of you having rejected this word and have put your confidence in oppression. What oppression? In the land of your oppression, you have put your confidence as if these Negroes is not coming for you. Them themselves have already given you a testimony that they had to move from one land to the next because they were surrounded around militias and they was being threatened. Imagine when Jacob troubles come, what's going on? With the heightened scenario that they mad that you Negroes is coming up. Right? In oppression, the land of your oppressors. And turning aside and relying on yourself in this. Yeah, I said, this is you relying on yourself. And that's exactly what she's telling you. Go get it, y'all. So this will be to you. This iniquity. This is an iniquity. It's sin. I said it. I said it. Now comment on my comment, you snake. Like a breach that falls, a bulging out in the high wall that suddenly in an instant will come breaking. This is the siege. And it will break like smashing of a potter's jar in pieces, not sparing. And I will not be found among its pieces and shard to take fire from, from kindle fire. So this is the ones that's going to get destroyed. He said, y'all not coming out of this fire. Or to scoop water from the cistern. For like this says Yahweh, the Almighty, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and, and rest or comfort, you will be saved. What? In city still in Babylon and waiting on him? Or in returning? you will be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength, but you will not. But you said no, for we will flee upon horses, right? When that day comes, we're going to flee. On this you shall flee, and we will ride upon the swift. They will ride swiftly, they that pursue you. And Daniel and David has told you how. He said a thousand of y'all are going to be fleeing at one. Y'all will be chased through the mountains and be left like one on a hill with a flag. Y'all think this is a game. 1,000 will flee at the threat of one man. That's what's going to happen to y'all that go back in these back lands and buy lands. You will flee at the threat of five until you are left as a flag on, a, on top and an ensign signal on a hill. That's how he's going to leave all of you that do this thing, this lying demon that's trying to tell you to do. It's not the word of Yah, and it is wicked. For Yahweh longs to be gracious to you, and therefore he will be exalted to have compassion on you. For Yahweh is Elohim, a just and judgment. Blessed are those who wait, but the word is not wait. It says, blessed are those that long for him. Where are we going to see him face to face? What did Ezekiel say that he's going to do? That he's going to bring us to see him face to face? You don't long to see your maker face to face? He said, let the nations prepare for war and let Israel prepare to see your makeup. That long for him. Why is he saying that these are ones that are wicked against the covenant? Because he said, in the wilderness, I'm going to bring you back underneath the covenant. And y'all know it. For the people shall dwell in Zion. As long as these people are in, in Babylon. They don't have to keep Yah's covenant, but Yah commanded them to keep the laws of the land, and they're not even doing that. For the people shall dwell in Zion and at Jerusalem. Thou shalt weep no more. He will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry. When he shall hear it, he will answer. And though Yahweh give you the bread of the adversary or tribulation and the water of oppression and distress, yet shall not thy teachers be removed in a corner anymore, but thy eyes shall see thy teachers. And so I'm one of them coming to tell you, come out. 
and come learn the ways of Yah. Face to face, not through no darn internet with her hiding on her lands. Let's read Daniel. Daniel 11. I'm going to skip some and get to the point. If anyone want to know all of Daniel, I go through it in the Mika Code. 31. And forces a strong arm from him will stand on his part. This is talking about that fierce beast. The fierce beast. And there's two fierce beasts of count, the countenance of the fierceness, the fierce one. And they will defile or pierce at the sanctuary and the strong uh, and the sanctuary of the strongholds or the fortress and turn aside the continual burnt offering and that they gave the abomination that makes desolate. What is this abomination that makes desolate? It's the vaccines. And I go into explaining this, that there's going to be a law put out that will stop the Holy Spirit from being able to seal itself in you. And where is this going to happen? This is going to happen in the land when this fierce countenance, this, this king of fierce countenance come upon, he's going to defile the people in the land. Where is he starting? At the sanctuary, at the stronghold. What is that stronghold? This land that they're getting, that they're saying, it's the word of Yah. It's the work of Yah. The wicked or the convicts of the covenant will flatter with plots or land or smooth plots of flattery. But the people who know their Elohim shall be strong and they shall do. So you say, I haven't proved what that word Kalkut means. I'm going to show you. So these people are wicked against Yah's covenant. And so they're going to flatter you with plots to, to go and buy plots of land. Watch this. Okay, I'm, I'm going to show you. I'm skipping down to 33. And the intellectual or the intel, that's what she is. She's a mashkile. And so that intelligence is the word that's used for the serpent. Not for the wise of Israel. This is not the wise, the wise version. This is the, the ones with the slippery tongue. That word, hashkin, mashkile, the wise or intellectual one. That's what this, she's an intellectual, wise, double tongued serpent, right? This wisdom is the wisdom of the serpent. So it says, and the intellectual and the um, intelligent is another word for wise, but it's the wisdom of Satan among the people understood for many so they're giving you counsel and understanding about what's supposed to be happening right but yet but yet though they're giving you some some wisdom and they understand it for you what's going on they telling you what's going on they will stumble and fall by the sword a blazing flame in captivity and spoil for many days y'all now when they shall fall they that they will be helped with a little help and many will join them with smoothness and flatteries. So this is the wise that tell you trouble is coming and we're we going we to get in trouble. We see what's going on in the cities. We see what's going on. It's going to be martial law and y'all not going to be able to get out and y'all going to be trapped. So we're going to be helped. So there are going to be those that come to us and try to help us in this issue. What? They're going to join themselves to us. They're going to come and cling to us, right? And tell who? These helpers. That's, that's the board watching. They're going to join to us with flatteries, right? We're going to go into these words and those who are intelligent will stumble and fall. Yup, these intelligent ones that joining us to tell you come get a plot of kalhut to refine and smelt them and to purify or to choose to make them white until the time of the kites, the end, because it is yet for a time appointed through an appointed season. All right, okay, I'm back. So I want to go into this word. Y'all just see smooth, teach us smooth things. Give us smooth prophecy. Give us flattery. But let's go into these words and let me show you what this dream, what this vision is that you are telling the prophets. Don't prophesy to us, but prophesy these smooth things. So we can see here in Isaiah, Isaiah 30, 10. I'm in Isaiah 30, 10. And I'm in Bible Hub. Go look it up yourself. And so it says, who say to the seers, do not see. And to the prophet, do not prophesy to us write things but speak to us flattery things i know y'all can't read hebrew it's called halakut you can see it halakut 25 13 let's go into find out what this word means y'all there's things that y'all y'all are these flattery words it means a field it means a smooth part a portion of ground strong's concordant this is what the prophets are prophesizing to you that's going to get you slaughtered trapped and destroyed by the sword. Listen, brown driver's dick, um, um, driver's bricks, right? From the word Kelly, 
feminine, a portion of ground, y'all. How a portion of ground, especially a clearly divided field. That's what they're selling you, right? Let's go further. Field of sword or edges. We read um, field of plotters, of liars and uh, liars and wait. So we have prophecy that says how they're going to lie and wait in the fields and come and get y'all. I'm not going through all those prophecies today. I've gone through them all. Chalcha, smooth part, smoothness, flattery, right? Smooth part, slippery places, um, a, a figurative of situation of the wicked. So this is this is, is figurative of what y'all say, y'all, a situation that you're going to put yourself in as wicked. Smoothness, flattery, right? Smooth things, things that's agreeable to you, a piece of land. That's what you want to hear, and it's agreeable to you, and they know it. A field, ground, parcel, part, piece, piece of land, ground, Pl uh, a plat, a portion. Feminine, from Kelly, properly smoothness, figurative, flattery, also a allotment, a field, flattery, ground, piece, parcel, part, piece of land, ground, plat, portion, slippery place, a smooth thing. Right? From the word Kelly. Let's go into the word Kelly. It means a portion, a tract, a territory. And that's what they sell you. Let's go into a Daniels 11 and 32. Here it is. I know y'all don't read no Hebrew, right? So those that do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupted with flattery. The Chalkut 2514. They call it flattery or slippery words. But this is the same thing when you read um. When you read um, Proverbs 6 and 24, when it talks about the adulterous woman, that she speaks smooth things, that her, the king is not coming back. This is talking about Babylon and all those that's speaking her message, that smooth tongue. What is she teaching? Come get your portion. Come get it. Come, come out of her, my people, right? But she wants you to commit adultery with her. What is this adultery? What is she selling y'all? What is she selling y'all? All right. So let's look at this word. Kalaka, smoothness, flattery, right? And it's only one used one time, but it comes from the same root that I, from Kalak or Kelik. Let's go into, see, uh, I went back. Let's go back. She talking about y'all to study. Go study. It's, um, Smoothness is flattery. It comes from the same root of the other word, flattery, a smooth speech. That's what the woman in Proverbs is, is speaking to you when she was like, my husband is not coming back. Chill out. Come get yourself some. So you break this word down, kalik or kalak. It means a part, a piece, and it's a smooth speech. It is what the, is, it is the flattery. It is the smooth speech that this woman, the whore, and this woman who is a part, who is a part of that Babylon whore, that's why I said she's an agent coming to sell you. And it's a piece of land. It's a piece of land, y'all. All right. So I say again, there's nothing coming out this woman's mouth but the snake, the serpent, the beast, the dragon that whore, Babylon. She's slippery, foul mouth, wise, intelligent, fool. She's a devil and she's selling you sin. Until then, here's a message that we used to sing in the church back in the day before this lying doctrines came out about a rapture. I'll leave you with that. Shalom. Oh, you better run, better run, better run. Ah, you better run. Better run, better run. Oh, you better run to the city of the rain. You better run. Hey, God, call Moses on the mountain. Come back here. They should get down right in. Oh, the heart and then he stamped the commandment. Said, Moses, my infant said, but Moses. Run, 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 run. Uh -huh. you